Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Um, you've all been waiting for this, I'm sure. We are going to talk about enemies this time. We'll show how to create them. Um, so, to create an enemy, you need basically two things. An enemy script uh, in this category here, this directory here, and the sprite representing your enemy. So, right now, um, as I'm recording this video, there are not a lot of enemies in the Solaris A Link to the Past pack, but uh, we'll make more, we'll put them. Um, anyway, in this video, we will create a new one. So, you will find, you will find this zip archive in the description of the video. You can download it and oops. Extract. So you have two files. Uh, actually it's it's the sprite of the enemy we will create. Skeletor. It's an enemy actually from Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX was created by New Link. It's not in A Link to the Past. So it will be a nice, a nice example of enemy to create. Uh, so let's find the project here. You want to put these in sprites slash enemies. In sprites slash enemies you already have the enemy killed animation from A Link to the Past. So all enemies will use it, except bosses. And um, okay, so here the quest editor detected the sprite sheet of Skeletor. Let's add it to the quest. Okay, so it's an enemy with four directions and four animations. Actually, all enemies should normally have at least these four animation animations. They can have more, of course, when they are attacking or doing special things. But by default, they are working. They can also so working is this one. Okay, they can be hurt, for example, by the sword. This is the hurt animation of this one. And they can also be immobil immobilized by some weapons, like in A Link to the Past, um, the hookshot, the boomerang. So actually, uh, <laughs> there is only this fixed frame. And the fourth one is shaking. It's a few seconds before the immobilization, the immobilized state ends. So enemies shaking a little bit and indicating that it will be working normally again very soon. So you should normally always have these four animations for any enemy except if you're absolutely sure that it's an enemy, uh, it's, it's a completely invincible enemy uh, like pikes, some, some enemies like that then you you wouldn't need the herd immobilized and shaking animations. But in general for animations, just like for NPCs you had uh, two animations to make normally, stopped and walking. Uh, if you actually never make your NPC work, similarly you, you don't really need the walking animation. So it's the same idea. And by the way, there is no stopped animation for enemies. Normally, they are always walking, at least. But of course, you can. I mean, the engine will initially put them in walking animation, but you can, of course, do your uh, change this in the script and make your animation your enemies stopped. Okay. So we have a valid enemy sprite sheet here. You can we can now create their script. So in this directory we will put enemy scripts. 
uh, skeleton. And by the way, the sprite ID here in sprites slash enemies should be the same as the enemy breed ID here. So enemy model ID. Uh, and by default, the editor creates this enemy script, which actually should almost be perfect. <laughs> so this is the script executed every time an enemy with this model is created. So let's create one now. It's this icon. Double click. Okay, so this is the enemy editor, editor dialog. Of course, as always, you can change the name, the position. This is the initial direction. It will look too, so why not down? The breed, so which enemy script will control it. Skeletor, actually it's the, it's the only one, it's the only one here. And you can save the, whether the enemy was killed. So usually you do this, but only for bosses, not for regular small enemies. But um, to create a boss, you, you just create a normal enemy, a normal enemy script. It's just that its sprite will be probably bigger than other enemies and that it will be saved. Also you can put a treasure, for example let's give a heart, and you can save the, the uh, found state of the treasure. For example if it was a key, maybe you want to save it. Okay, here it is. So the enemy makes 16 by 16, but its sprite is, is larger. Exactly like for sprite for NPCs, sorry. And for the hero. But actually the size can can also be customized. Um, by default it's 16 by 16, but the script can change it here. Yeah. Okay, does it work? It works. Except that the sprite is always looking south because we gave the the south direction to the enemy. Um, and yeah, the problem is just that we never update the sprite to make it look uh, to the same direction as the movement, unlike NPCs. And this is actually because um, not all enemy sprites have four directions. This one happens to have four directions, but um, there are a lot of enemies that have only one direction. For example, this one, it looks the same in all directions. Actually, I duplicated them all to still have four directions, um, but it's only for historical reasons, I think. <laughs> And there are also sp often enemies that only have two directions, left and right. They always look to a side. For example, the ghosts in Zelda Link to the Past. So anyway, if we want to fix this, um, we can use the on movement change event of enemies. But first let's try to understand this script. So all this code is executed every time an enemy is created on a map uh, and if the enemy has this model, this breed. So when it's created we initialize the sprite of the enemy. Actually we create a sprite explicitly with the name um, enemies slash and then the, the ID of the breed of the enemy so enemies slash skeleton here and you should really do that we do it explicitly in the script here but um, the quest editor also assume this convention so that's why it displays enemies slash skeleton here Um, 
and you sh you pro you will probably want to set the life of the enemy and he the damage he inflicts to the to the hero there are a lot of functions in the enemy api then we recre recreate the movement but only in the in this event on restarted this event is called not only when the enemy is created but also whenever he needs to restart to get back to its normal state typically after it was hurt um, so that's why we create the movement here because if let's say he has more life every time I hurt him he is pushed back the hurt animation occurs and then this code is called again so that's why he can continue to to chase us okay and we can we can check with a debug message here let's see the console okay you can see restarted every time he um he restarts after he was hit okay um yeah so i haven't finished this yet and uh, the movement actually is a variable declared here and also same for the sprite which allows us to handle them both also in this event otherwise we would have to make enemy get sprite and enemy get, mo get movement but sprite set animation so it's a four direction sprite and we need to ask the movement the current angle of the trajectory and to convert this to the closest one of the um, among the four main directions but luckily it's uh, it's something we need very very often so there is already what you want in the Solaris API in the movement API there is a function get direction for in all movements and it actually converts the current angle of the movement to the closest direction in the four direction system very useful for sprites for NPCs or uh, for sprites of NPCs or enemies so I think that this should just work nope that's very strange Oh, set no, no, not set animation. Set direction. Okay, the animation is hurt. I'm obliged, shaking, walking. And I, I don't want to explicitly change it. I let the engine handle this. So okay, it works. So this event is called um, when a property of the current movement of the enemy is changed so it's typically when the the angle of the trajectory is changed or the speed or anything really so there are a lot of things in the enemy API of course there are a lot of things in the movement API the sprite API which are also useful for enemies but enemies are one of the most customizable type types of entities and only custom entities are more customizable because <laughs> actually it's their it's their main feature but um, we'll see custom entities in another tutorial so yeah, there is a, there are a lot of functions you can change the lives damage um, you can really decide what happens whenever the enemy is attacked by each particular possible attack you can get or set the treasure 
you can say that uh, an enemy is flying with set of obstacle behavior then he, he, he will be he, it will be able to uh, fly over over water and holes without falling you can change a lot of things you can hurt them from a script etc um, okay and in the oops in the basic script here in this example of enemy we we never actually uh, programmed anything about the fight system so the hero has the sword collisions are detected automatically and the enemy is hurt is hurt automatically he is pushed back he takes the hurt animation all of this is built in in the engine and all of this can be customized but by default it works like this you don't have to do anything more just really indicate the life, the damage, the basic properties and usually you will create a movement most enemies have movements most enemies will also have timers um, because yeah this one is quite simple but um, a lot of enemies make some attacks uh, with some some delay f possibly random delays so this would this would be implemented as timers you can see the example of enemies in our existing games it's also very likely that you make a lot of enemy enemy scripts that actually have the exact same behavior and their only difference will be their sprites their life and their damage so to handle this you should factorize most of the code in in a separate script that's what i do in my games so again you can check the code the existing code to get some inspiration but at least now you have the the basic uh, information to create your own enemy and your own enemy scripts okay so i hope you enjoyed this episode that's all for now see you next time bye